Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Avatar Rewatch. Sorry for being on the wrong side. Jared has a bit of an ego problem this week. I think uh, the, the, the Justice League Rewatch we did has gotten a little bit of uh, a big head, but, you know, that's on his channel, not here. So, Jared has corrected his mistake. Thank you. So, this one, we are uh, going to Wanshi Tong's library, and we're meeting an owl. Hmm... Which so uh, reminded me of my college time, since the mascot of my school was an owl. And that's all it reminded you of? I gotta ask, where have I heard that voice actor before? <laughs> I'm trying to find it, because the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, I've heard it's this. It's called IMDb. Go on IMDb. IMDb. Are you talking about the researcher or the uh, the, 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 the owl? The owl. I think the owl actually, at the researcher, I, I I think is a pretty pretty well known voice actor. Well, this is the recap episode, but anyway, Nick, keep talking. What while, while I try and find so, it? So yeah, so basically, this episode is they're all doing like their own mini vacations, and I really love like the intro where like Aang's like playing a flute and like these like uh, let's just call them like catch like a uh, groundhogs come up in like notes it's just it's just kind of adorable but like Sokka's like we need intel we need intel and so um for Katara's location they go the misty palms oasis so, so Jared what was your reaction when like they played it up and like they showed the image like I was like I saw that coming I saw that coming a mile away I'm like there's no way it's that easy it shows up it's a desert and I love yep. it I like it's changed since then Yep, uh, you know, I'm I'm sure um, I am very sure that uh, you know uh, Katara would be like, but I'm still pissed off. The little bastards lied to me. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then uh, so they so they get there and and they go kind of into a restaurant and like Jared, how cool did those drinks look? They did look very cool. I dug that. Uh, that uh, that was very interesting. Yes, I, I, I guarantee. I, I, how much you want to bet those drinks were ice cold? Oh boy! Yes. <laughs> See, the joke is the bowls were literally ice. Also, like, can we give a shout out to like the the guy's sword maneuvers? Like, dear God, like that guy practices. Yes, he does. He does. <laughs> And uh, so you meet the researcher who has a very familiar voice that I'm sure Jared will tell us when he gets to the IMDB page. I'm trying to. Uh, so, so wait. Oh, the researcher. Because the, the, the spirit guy is the one that I'm like, where have I heard that voice before? I guarantee you've heard the researcher before, though, too. Like, yeah, that too. He, but hang on. I I'll think he's actually this. I think he was actually in, like, oh, that's Karth's voice. It's Karth from KOTOR. Okay, that's where I've heard that guy's name be before. Yeah, no, like, I had voice. to think about it. But yeah, that is Cars from Coke. All right, all right. You must be the most damn persistent woman I've ever met. Don't you snap at me, Missy. You want a lecture? Kotor is playing the researcher. So he's, he goes from playing an a-hole to a researcher. Sweet. A different type of a-hole. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> yeah, I, I dug that. I, I dug how, like... So like devoted he is to research wait, and everything. Wait, 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 no, no, no. I got, I, I, I got. I'm sorry. We got to ride with this. I got a good joke. He went from an a hole to a b hole, and by b hole, I mean book hole. <laughs> Jared, Jared was like, "Oh no, please no, please no." Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I also loved how like uh, I, I, I liked how like. Well, first off, I recognized Ba Sing Se. The name of it, I was like, okay, because N N N Nick brings that up so many times during the episode, uh, d during the, the there show. There is no war in Bossing Say. Or there is no Avatar movie in Bossing Say. 
that too. And uh, I loved how, like, as soon as he got in the library, he was like a kid at Christmas. I dug that. Yeah, that that was uh, that was uh, that was that was pretty pretty sweet. Um, like, what do you think of like the foxes and whatnot? And also, uh, in this episode, uh, they really did kind of like go with the joke of like, oh, everyone forgets that Toph is blind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's really uh, because here's the thing. She doesn't exactly act like it, so it's like it's really easy to f- f- forget because she's still capable and everything. So everyone's looking at it like, well, she obviously could still see. She can't, but still. Two of my favorite jokes in this episode. Is he's like, "Look, there it is," and they're like, "Well, that's what you would say when you find it." And she's yeah, like, I, I love that. I was like, "She did the John Cena." For a second there, I was like, "How does she know?" And then, then, then it was part of the joke, and I was like, "Yeah, I saw that." I was like, "Yeah." The the other one uh, that I love is like, "Eh, I, I, you guys stay out here." It's like, and then Katara's like, "What do you have against book books?" And she's like, "Well, I've held them." but they don't really do anything for me. And then guitar is like, oh. <laughs> she goes, let me know if they, she basically says, let me know if they have any audio books in there. <laughs> well, uh, maybe maybe uh, they should get top a subscription to Audible. Mm-hmm. Audible, please sponsor us. Yes, we would love that. <laughs> you sponsor everyone. Yeah. This podcast is not sponsored by Audible, but it could be one day. Or it could be sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. This podcast will never be sponsored by Rage Shadow Legends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, the joke is just, I was just, mm-hmm. like, I just, the whole bit was good. That was perfect. Thank you. And I also love how the, how they discovered, like, what the darkest day in the Fire Nation is. Because at first it's like, okay, we have this page. We have an advantage. We can do this. Oh, no, they burned down the room. And the Fox Wolf thing shows up and goes, oh, yeah, this way. Yeah, I, the thing that I was wondering is, uh, what what does the fox say? I was about to say, Nick has to title this episode, What Does the Fox Say? I was going to make a Screecher reference, but that works better. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, there's no way he doesn't title it. Well, what does no, the fox no, what, say? No, what it's going to be is uh, the fox in like the shot with like, like when he's talking to Sokka, and the title will be, What Does the Fox Say? Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, See, now, Jared is real, see, this is why I keep Jared around, because he's really smart. Yeah, of course, especially when it comes to ships. But uh, my one thing that I felt You're on my weird, channel. The one thing that I think, but it's my stream yard. The one thing that, that I thought was kind of odd was the owl dragon thing. That was a little that was a little creepy because I'm like, okay, it's an owl. Then it like extends and it gets into four legs. I'm like, what? It's a spirit. Remember that. It's not an actual animal. It's a spirit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now I uh, now I remember that. But back then I was like, okay, so what animal hybrid is this now? It's beyond hybrid. It's a spirit. Yeah. But uh, that was interesting. I dug, I dug that. And I also liked how as soon as they started looking around, that's when the dragon beast is like, oh, yeah, get out. Well, uh, the reason why he said get out is uh, he didn't want humans using his knowledge for war or for conflict. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. uh, the Fire Nation person came in and literally burnt an entire section of the library to the ground. Like, I'm sorry, but like, I'd be pissed too. Yeah, that's true. You'd be kind of distrustful of outsiders trying to access your library. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like when it's like when you lend a friend a video game and they give it back to you and it's all scratch. You confront about they're like, eh, whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I had to because that game is key to my nation's survival. It doesn't mean you had to scratch up my my copy of Final Fantasy VII, Albert. Well, yeah, because no one cares about Final Fantasy VII. I'm like, I'm like, what? All right, all right. This is Jared's last episode on, on uh, Avatar. Rewind. I had to. I I'm had to. Th- you can edit this th- out. I don't care. Oh, trust me. Uh, I got a better clip in hand because trust me, I'm probably going to be editing this. So it's like I'm playing clips in this. So yeah, we're going to have fun. Yeah, exactly. There you go. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, so that, you know they find uh, what is what is going to be called the Day of Black Sun. Not, that's not mentioned in this episode, but like that's just what it's going to be called in the future. So it's like whatever I'll call you know. Mm-hmm. That's going to be an important plot point in really the third like like it'll be kind of be mentioned throughout the rest of the season but like that plot point is really going to be important in the third season so like yeah. they're they're putting this in re- really hard um also i feel like this episode does really good good foreshadowing <laughs> because also like jared t- uh tell me tell me if you, if you kind of get got the sense of the vibes like did the Missy Paul Oasis give you like Star Wars Tatooine vibes a little it bit? It did, one hundred percent. Yes, it reminded me like, a lot of Mo- of of Moss Eisley slash Espa. I have to yeah, like someone to go. You'll never find a bigger den of scum and villainy. Yeah, like that scene where they're having the confrontation with the Sandbenders. I, I was getting some. He doesn't like you. I don't like you. You'll be dead. And it's like I don't like you either. I, I have the dev sessions on 12 star systems. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, okay you got to give me a dweeb. Uh, uh, I don't think I have that, that one installed on this account. All right, you know what? Well, screw it. Here. Dweeb. All right. Here's another one. He fills out his clothes like lentils fill out a sandwich bag. Not you, the people in that scene. Yeah, so we, we get, like, sandbenders, we kind of learn about them, and we get uh, a little bit of exposition on them. So how did you feel when that scene happened? Which scene are you referring to? At the end, um, with Appa. So you're going to have to, like... Uh, when the library that. is sinking, and Toph is trying to hold it up, and the sandbenders roll up. That was dope. Dope wouldn't be the word I described it. It's really heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Because it really does add some character for Toph. Like, it shows really really just how much she cares. Because up until this point, it looked like she didn't really care about them or anyone because she's constantly, like, ribbing them. She's training Aang like Batman. But it's, it's like... When you watch it, you could see the struggle. You could see her actually like saying, "No, I'm not going to lose this fa- this new family I have." Like th- this, this, this basically gives her like it's a trolley problem. This is basically she basically has a trolley problem where she could save Appa, but her friends would die. But if but if uh, she saves her friends, Appa gets captured. You know, and mm-hmm. it's it's a bad it's a hard choice. It is mm-hmm. it's like expertly showed like that moment where like she does blow some sand at him the, the, the temple goes down like because without her they, her friends would have been who would have been killed because she was the one like also can we give some props to Toph like how strong she has to be to keep that temple up I mean obviously she can't do it forever but to able to keep it up for as long as she did that is some power she girl. is powerful well in her on that, she is like surrounded by sand, which I'm pretty sure counts in the earth bending realm. It does. Um, but it, it's kind of like a different feel. Mm-hmm. Also, I, I think it's safe to say that Toph hates sand. I was about to bring that up. I was like, please <laughs> pun that. Please pun that. So like, you're, te- I, so you're I, telling me she thinks sand is rough and coarse and irritating and gets everywhere? Because, like, I am so tempted to, like, uh, just, like, make the thumbnail top and just have it work. But we'll say, I hate sand. Please put the edit in there. Uh, please, future Nick, splice in a clip of Anakin going, I don't like sand. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he will. He will. He will. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Remember, Nick. I, I remember future Nick. I am past Nick. We are one and the same. <laughs> so you are one with yourself in the future. I'm one with the force, and the force is with me. No, I am one with the Nick. The Nick is with me. <laughs> that just sounds bad. <laughs> but yeah, that that was dope. I I, I love that. But yeah, it's a pretty good episode, anyway. Yeah, and then like it, and uh, so yeah, things are just gonna get like honestly. 
like this next episode is really dark. Ooh. Um, so you're telling me it's what would happen if Zack Snyder directed an episode of Avatar? That's actually going to be the exact title of next week's episode. <laughs> you're welcome. Because you see Aang when he loses, like Appa is his best friend. You, like you got to realize it's like, well, let's just say Aang goes full John Wick. People keep asking if I'm back and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Oh, because I thought going John Wick would be like w w what he did at the finale of season one. But, if but you're no, because, you know, like John Wick, like they killed his dog. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, they kidnapped his sky bison, which is essentially his dog. Oh, this is gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm excited now. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, yeah, it's it's uh, it takes it. It honestly takes him like an episode or two to kind of get over it. And and Appa's gonna be gone for a while. And I'm letting you know there are some tearjerker episodes coming up. Like, um, like uh, t two two episodes that will make you cry are Tales from Bossing Say. Every every Avatar fan like is is kind of doing their pre crying right now, and then Appa's Lost Days. Ooh. So um, yeah. So so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um. So right now, like basically, like now that this is kind of done, the plan for the gang is they're heading to Bossing Say. Sweet. Like that's kind of that's kind of where where this season is heading. So, um. We got some really good episodes ahead of us, and um, yeah, I just can't wait. So, Jared, what would you give this episode? Nine out of ten. Super dope action, world building. Everything is great. That top scene is awesome. Everything is really cool. Nine point five. This is probably one of the best episodes of the series. Sweet. Like when people talk about like the best episodes, like marquee episodes, this is one of them. Because here's what you have to understand about me. I love world building. I love heavy lore episodes. This was that. Yeah, you learn a lot. And uh, so um, I think it's safe to say that this has been Nick from the Phoenix Press. And remember, I can only show you the door. You're the one to walk through it.